One to one and three quarter yard shovels could be seen on almost every construction site before the 1930s. However, these machines were starting to be too small for the construction projects to come. Construction and earth moving companies were desperate for a larger machine. Hi, I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Steel, and this is another episode of Toy Talk. Today's episode is about another great toy farmer, toy trucker, and contractor magazine release for the 2023 National Toy Truck and Construction Show that was held this past August in Indianapolis, Indiana. At the show, I was able to review the only decorated deco sample model in the States that was on display at Toy Farmer's Booth, and I had a rare treat to compare the deco sample to the tooling first shot sample model that Speccast had on display at their booth. Special thanks go out to Julie, Angie, and Kathy at Toy Farmer, along with Dave Bell at Speccast for their loan of their very precious models to make this video. Northwest Engineering has already built a solid reputation for building rugged shovels since 1921 when the company was founded. But these small machines were no longer cutting it for the construction projects being proposed in the 1930s. To answer the plea of construction companies for a larger machine, Northwest developed the Model 8 in 1930. This revolutionary machine changed the game for larger projects with the first two cubic yard capacity shovel on the market. But they weren't satisfied with just having the first two cubic yard class machine. So in 1931, the two cubic yard Model 78D came out with a host of improvements to the Model 8. The Model 78D was offered as a traditional shovel, a drag line, or a crane. But was Northwest Engineering satisfied? Were they ready to sit back and rest on their laurels? Nope! Northwest Engineering went on to develop their most popular machine ever, the two and a half cubic yard model, 80. This machine was introduced to the public in 1933. To show how popular this model was, production didn't end until 1985, only a few years before T-Rex shut down Northwest Engineering in 1990. Of course, over that long of a lifespan, the machine received several updates. One of the most curious updates occurred in 1937. The letter D was added to the model number and the model 80 became the model 80D. Why the designation change is unknown. One possible theory is the D might have stood for diesel power. However, this theory is squashed for two reasons. First, they offered the diesel-powered Model 80s before 1937. And second, they labeled the gasoline-powered versions as Model 80Ds, just like the diesel-powered versions. So, if anyone knows why, drop it down in the comments below. The first versions had a squarish machinery house. In 1947, the machinery house was redesigned with a more rounded look. Many people thought it looked like a bread box. To me, it just looked like a design more in tune with the times. In 1955, the Model 80D found a new, cleaner, and refined design including a new boom or stick configuration that replaced the old twin stick 
configuration. This design became the definitive look of the Model 80D. However, as time wore on, this design became outdated, and in the early 1970s, the Series 2 version was released with the new capsule cab replacing the breadbox house. This cab isolated the operator from the machinery noise. Also, this version ushered in a new paint scheme. Many were painted in the traditional orange and black, but others received the new paint scheme of orange, white, and gold. This version lasted until production of the Northwest Model 80D ended in 1985. The Model 80D was offered as a traditional front shovel, a pull shovel, aka backhoe, a drag line, or a crane. When the Northwest Engineering Model 80 was first released in 1933, it came with all their proven features from Northwest's earlier machines. These included the feather touch mechanism and the dual crowd feature. The feather touch mechanism reduced operator fatigue by using engine power to activate drum clutches instead of the operator manually activating the clutches with mechanical levers. The dual crowd feature assisted crowding the dipper forward into a bank while digging by putting tension at the end of the hoist cable. Unfortunately, the twin stick boom setup in the early Model 80s included very complex reeving for the hoist and crowd functions. Twin City gasoline engines and Fairbanks and Atlas diesel engines were offered in the early versions. But in 1938, the Murphy MP21 diesel engine was introduced to match the rugged design of the Model 80D. This Murphy diesel quickly became the most popular engine choice due to its low revving and high torque. The Murphy-powered Northwest Model 80D earned the nickname a real rock shovel. In 1955, the twin stick boom was replaced with a single stick, which greatly simplified the reeving for the hoist and the crowd functions. In 1962, the feather touch controls were replaced by the cushion air system that replaced the fully mechanical controls with air-operated controls. This system was already in use on the larger 180D and 190D machines. So it was proven long before it was installed in the ever popular Model 80D. It was only natural for Kathy Scheibe at Toy Farmer to choose the 1955 Murphy-powered Northwest Model 80D to replicate in 50th scale for the 2023 National Toy Truck and Construction Show. And here we go, guys. I have a real treat with this one. This right here, this one right here is the decorated sample, the only decorated sample in the States right now of the Northwest 80D, the National Toy Truck and Construction Show 2023 construction piece release by Speccast. But because Speccast came this year to the show, we get this, see this one, which is the first shot off of the tooling. And Dave Bell at Speccast was gracious enough to loan this to me to make this video. So we can actually look at a decorated versus the very first shot. And as he said, this one here is about 95% complete. And then this one here is, should be basically ready for production. At least that's what I understand. But uh, isn't that awesome? You can see how with the first shots we get, it's just raw, unpainted uh, parts. The plastic is molded in black, so it's already black. The, the string that they use to string it is already in black. So we get those parts, but everything else is just raw, unpainted metal, which is really cool. The Northwest 80D they're doing is a 
front stiff leg, which is a front shovel type, and all of the stringing goes through and it works so that everything works. The little door drops open, the trap door, it will raise and lower. There's a key, you can kind of see it here, and I'll get around to it shortly, that will function everything on these machines. And wow, this is just really cool. They're also quite heavy. It's in the Northwest orange with black paint. You can see up here, we have the Northwest decal. It's a tampo print that says Northwest. And this is the key that will make everything run. And you can see, they put on it Northwest 80D. Really, really nice. It's in the same orange and it would just slip in to the keyhole and as you turn it, it will turn everything. I'm not gonna mess with that because I have dealt with these and they just, well, there you go. You see as I'm turning it, it's raising the shovel up. If I turn it the other way, it'll lower it. But these things, the stringing is always so very impressive on these, but I just don't wanna mess with it because they just wanna you know gets all tangled up the body and the tracks are all die cast the string is is as a um, woven thread type string for the cables and then the hand railing here is plastic and it looks like it's got some little plastic rollers for the actual rollers for the thing now these front uh, wheels up here they are die cast and that's where seeing this tooling sample over here really helps out we turn around to the back you can see the chevron pattern here with the big n and w and then the doors and we'll go on and turn this one around but this tooling sample it shows us everything that is actually in metal on here because none of the metal actually is painted you can see this upper structure here over here you can see that it's rounded whereas on this one here it is just flat and that should have been rounded for more like a pipe where these are flat bars on the side but it was like a, a, a rounded tube that they put in between welded in between for structure well on the tooling sample over here you can see it was actually just uh they tooled it out flat and of rounded and they've corrected that for this one as i said there's always a few things that are wrong on the tooling samples but you can see the molding for the back door, the door doesn't open. The plate here for where it says Northwest is a little bit raised and you can definitely see that it's a little bit raised there. Moldings are all really good. Coming around to this side here, over onto this side, you can see the handrails. The handrails are right on. And then we have the ladder up here so they can climb up and work on the stringing and the rigging and everything. A neat little feature, the door opens to reveal the detailed interior. Obviously, as we can, we would assume that the dashboard and the little levers on the model would be in plastic and you can tell that they're black plastic over here. And then they're nice painted orange with little black levers on it. It's also got a black seat with orange frame there and it's an all black seat over on this one. Now on the tooling sample, the door still opens. You can note more clear plastic on the finished one than on this tooling sample. They don't go quite as well on the plastics that they use there. So it's just kind of a little milky, but a tooling sample would have that problem. It's that's normal for them. They're not perfect. Both have metal tracks, you can see, and they do roll pretty well. Not the greatest, but they do roll pretty well. On this model, they went over here and they put the Northwest ADD logo on the door so that when the door is closed, you can see it, what model it is. And they've got the Northwest again up here on the boom. Obviously, on this wonderful uh, sample here, there's no decals. No, nothing on it as far as the paint and what's funny is it rolls a little better than the other model but that's okay possibly the paint made it a little stiffer but 
it's just really cool. You're seeing a true raw casting here. It shows all of the parts. We have the wheels up top that are the guides for the uh, strings and stringing these things is definitely a uh, challenge in my opinion. I've, I've done them before and I just don't want to do it. The boom goes up and the door also opens on it. And I'll put this cable back up here where he belongs on that spool. There we go. And you can see here's the door it would open. They did for a first shot, this one here is right on, in my opinion. Not quite sure where this cable was supposed to go, but it would go up there somewhere. You can, it has a, a metal wheel down here, die cast metal. And then the cable drum inside, you can see they are down here, they are plastic. That makes sense that those would be a plastic part on this model. Um, be just much, much more intelligent than trying to make them out of die cast. Another little neat thing you can see, the flashing, the center is not cut out here on these two wheels, but on the deco sample, the finish sample, it is cut out like it's supposed to be. As I said, they, about 95%, that's one of the things that they didn't do is cut that metal out when they should have. But overall, impressive little model here. This uh, Northwest ADD, it's going to be the toy trucker exclusive specifically for the show. And that's the only version that is rumored to be ever to be made. And then you can see we got a grill here, hand railing, the doors all there. They use these little holes. The real ones wouldn't have them, but the model does so that they can run the key to run the cable drums, which is... You know, they want to make this thing as functional as possible. They don't want a static model. They want everything to work. So that's that's how they do it. They use those little keys. Let's pick him up carefully. And look underneath. All right, we go there. You can see the chain drive from the center to the rear sprocket which would be the drive for the tracks. And if I turn them around, I guarantee there's one on this side. Yep, you can see it right there. It does swivel, It'll, it should rotate 180 degrees on this base. But with that cable there, I'm afraid to try it with this one. I'll do it with the other one. But it has the detail underneath. Looks like they've screwed the base and the machine together. So that is a really cool feature. And then see the tracks do move. And they actually move pretty well for the size. 50th scale is impressive that we could get that. Your two little idler wheels up on top are they are plastic and they're just metal molded in guide wheels, idler wheels underneath. And then your front sprocket is also done in uh, plastic. The few plastic parts on this thing are totally, totally, completely understandable that they would be plastic. Um, some things you just don't do in all metal, especially when you're trying to go for full detail. And we've seen up here where they fixed this. They've got all of this here really, really nice. They got the side window. It doesn't open, but it's got the bar on it. So that it looks like it could open, you know, like the two piece window and the real one. Now let's do a little bit more in depth on this other one here. Set that one further back. And this one, which is, it's got all its stringing a little bit better. There is a uh, pulley right there, cable reel for there. You can see the different uh, cable reels inside. You can see how they got everything done really, like if you, you look at, you look back at the other one and look at this one there, wow, they were right on with that just a few minor things, you know, the easy stuff to fix. And then they fix this pipes. This piece here is an add-on piece. It's not molded in. It's got the cables, it's got the little sprockets, the wheels that are hollow on this one, like they're supposed to be the big spools. And then it's got the lower spool, which, you know, rolls around as this pulling that up. 
Oh, see, there's the problem with the cables. <laughs> it's easy for the strings to get out. The door will open back here. It trips and so you could dump it out. Oop. Underneath we can see the tracks are, looks like they're just a little bit tighter and that's probably due to the paint on this thing. The plastic sprockets and then the plastic spools, but you don't know that they're plastic. They look like they're metal, but plastic was probably a much better choice of material for this, for those things. They'll roll better than the metal. Inside the cab, you have the seat. As we go up here, you have the seat inside, you have the levers inside, and then you have a little windshield wiper that's tampoed on there. And then they got that neat little cut down for the windshield wiper motor. That's really nice. A handrail here and another window underneath. <laughs> this uh, piece here is plastic that fills in this bottom. You're really never gonna notice that. The bucket is all die cast. Like, they added the lights. They got the work light there and up on top of the cab. Overall, it's I'm very impressed with this model and I'll be happy to have this model around because it's all we're ever gonna get. It has the N and W for Northwest, the Chevron pattern and the stores. The paint scheme, phenomenal. Again, you can see the holes for the keys that do work and make all the workings work. It has a little step there underneath. You can see how they use the screws to screw it all together, just like in the other model. But uh, with the black paint, most of this stuff disappears. It stands out on that one, but on this one, it pretty much disappears, which is really cool. Um, this is one impressive model. And, uh, there's the problem. See what happens with cables? <laughs> These were problems for the real machines too, by the way, not just the models, but in, in the models they're a little more, they do a, cause a little bit more because frustration because, simply because they're so much smaller. But there we go. And there we go, guys. That is the 2023 National Toy Truck and Construction Show construction release model specific for the show. It is the Northwest ADD front shovel in 150th scale. It's made by Speccast, and we have the first shot over here and the decorated sample over there. A big thanks to Dave Bell for loaning me this first shot for this video and to Toy Trucker and Contractor for loaning me the decorated sample to make this video. The decorated version is available with the link down below, and I totally recommend you getting one of these even at the price because it's the only Northwest ADD that is going to be made. That is the rumor and it will be a great addition to your collection and it will help keep this hobby going for us. So please consider getting one. You'll really enjoy it. Northwest Engineering Company was founded in 1970 by the Hartman Greeling Company of Chicago, Illinois. Hartman Greeley started manufacturing cranes in 1920. Northwest led the way in crane development and manufacture of cranes until 1983. T-Rex Corp acquired Northwest in 1983 and operated Northwest until closing Northwest Engineering a few years later in 1990. The toy trucker strives to make the finest scale models of construction equipment, like this Northwest shovel, and the Versiris Erie model of a steam shovel used to dig the Panama Canal. That Versiris Erie shovel was one of the best scale models that they have made. As I have shown you, this Northwest Engineering shovel lives up to the high standards the toy trucker is set for their scale model replicas. The Speccast built model is of a Northwest Engineering Model 80D crane set up as a traditional cable operated front shovel in the most definitive look 
of the Murphy powered ADD. You can still order one of these models with the link down below to toyfarmer.com. Delivery is expected to be late December of 2023. While you're at Toy Farmer's website, go on and subscribe to both Toy Farmer and Toy Trucker and Contractor Magazine to really help keep our hobby alive. I've got a checklist of all versions of the Northwest Engineering models that SpecCast has made over the years. Grab it with the link down below. Finally guys, go on and watch my videos on the Northwest Model 25D and the Besires Erie steam engine with the links right here. I'm Logan and I'll be back soon with another video.